Okay, let's see if this works. Uh, I just have it set up gently there on the uh, dash, the camera. Um, but I have my app off. I'm not. I'm just going home right now, real quick, for my little daily break. But uh, so just a, a little update here, a little catch up for for my uh, Lyft and uh, Uber and basic rideshare experience. Uh, in general, I kind of like it. It's not difficult uh, for me. It's not. It also um, is very flexible. If I do want to work, I work. If I don't, I don't. If I have time or whatever, you know, I can or I don't. It's up to me. Um, there's no one, to, no one to punch, no clock to punch in. I don't have to do it every day. So that's all good. And if you do it at the right times um, in a sort of the right way, you can actually do okay for your hourly income. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, you know, how much was your gas going to cost, your wear and tear in your vehicle, blah, blah, blah. And in some ways, I agree with that. But in other ways, um, I figure I'm going to wear it out anyway. And the bottom line is when you're making a living, you're going to wear out something anyway. I mean, you don't money just doesn't fall from the sky, you know, normally. It's either you putting in the time, your body getting wear and tear, or your uh, car in this case, you know, the truck, or something. It always takes time. It always takes some kind of effort. And then you make, you know, hopefully more money than you're spending, basically, using up your resources. And that's just how it is. So in this case, it's the truck. Mostly, the most of the expense and the wear and tear it comes in the, in the form of what you're driving, your car. With, um, obviously, gas, in this case, as well as, of course, you know, tires and brakes and everything else. Basic maintenance, all those sort of things get accelerated when you're driving a thousand miles a day or every couple of days or whatever it is. All that stuff is also tax deductible, including the mileage to a certain degree. I don't know what it is. You get 50 cents a mile or something. I forgot. I don't know. But, you know, you get something back on it. So if you keep track of it, that's, that's useful. Uh, because uh, these things, you're, uh, when you sign up for this, you become basically an independent contractor. So you're responsible for all your own taxes. They don't take anything out. But in the end, you're, at the end of the year, you're going to have to put something back in to pay for your taxes. Hold that thought. Okay, so I've. Uh, this is the next day from the previous recording. And I'm going home to take a break. Because what I normally do is a, a kind of a morning shift, and then I take a break, and then it's an afternoon shift. Uh, mostly because those are the busier times, so there's not really any reason to be uh, driving around in circles when you're not going to really make that much money. I mean, that's the theory at least. And. But the other thing that I really wanted to make this a video about, or maybe I'll make a series of videos as I make progress, is that since I'm a new driver, I've only been doing it about, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, seven weeks now. I think I signed up at the very end of February, or beginning of March, something like that. But at the time, my friend who was trying to get me to sign up said, wait. He had me sign up with Uber first, but said, wait on uh, Lyft. Because Uber had an okay, what looked like an okay promotion at first for new drivers. And he said, Lyft has a much better promotion, but it's not happening right now. He said that they take it away and then they bring it back, you know, just like all these companies do. And the bottom line is these both, these giant companies, Lyft and Uber, are basically, you know, 
competing with each other, so things keep shifting around as it suits them to put things on sale or don't put it on sale or try to get more drivers or not, doesn't matter, we got enough, you know, whatever the case may be. So, the, uh, I signed up for Uber and then uh, I started getting that rolling, but he said sign, and then like maybe, I don't know, four days later or a week later at the most, uh, he says, oh, okay, the Lyft uh, promotion's turned on that they started it up again, the big one, that he wanted me to go for. The Uber promotion was something like 75 rides and you'll make $600. And it seemed like a bonus. He was gonna make $600 a referral and I was gonna make $600 as a bonus for completing 75 rides. Um, and shortly after I started doing that, The Lyft one comes up and he says, oh, quick, sign up for Lyft because the, the, the big one's happening there. And their promotion at the time was, if you complete 1,000 rides within 90 days, which is basically three months, then you get a $5,000 bonus. So $5,000 on top of whatever it is you earned obviously during that time and so we I had signed up for that and I thought at first you know I should wait I'm trying to do this uber one first it's gonna split my time I don't want to feel pressured on both but what ended up happening is uh, after I was doing it a few weeks off and on he calls me back and said my friend calls him back and says oh the uber promotion was a lie it's not 600 for both of us if you complete it 75 it's a guaranteed 600 if you complete 75 for you and he was still gonna make the 600 as a referral fee so he said that's kind of bullshit and I said, well, 600 sounds like a lot. He says, yeah, but you'd have to really do terrible to do $600 in the first place. And as I started going along doing the 75 rides, once I got to about 35, I realized he was correct. You know, 50 rides, I knew it, I was gonna pass uh, the 600 mark because what it was instead, it, it wasn't 600 for me and for him. It was 600 for him and a guarantee that I'll make 600 a guarantee not a bonus so the difference is if I make $300 in 75 rides then uber would pay the difference extra 300 to get me to 600 if I made 550 dollars in 75 rides uber would then pay the $50 extra to get me all the way to 600 but what happened was I ended up making about 75, I mean, um, $750 or something like that, a little bit more uh, in the 75 ride. So since I passed the $600 mark, there was no, there was nothing to pay. The guarantee was that you would make 600 and I already did. So instead I got a very nice email that said, thank you. Uh, you, you passed the 600 with the 750, whatever it was, so you get nothing. By the way, would you like to refer any of your friends? <laughs> that's, that's, we would we'll be happy if you do that now, even though you're not getting any bonus. Now my friend, um, who was also taken by surprise by this, uh, by this uh, sudden change in the, in the bonus strategy for Uber, you know, I'm sure it was in the fine print, but, you know, they don't make it obvious. They, they really try to kind of sneak it in there. And they're kind of sneaky. You know, it's a fucking corporate bullshit. They're trying to get people to get involved. And, and in the end, the bonus wasn't really... Well, the bonus would have been great, but as a guarantee, it's kind of bullshit. Because they know you'd really have to be doing terrible to not get 600. It's almost like saying, you know, if, if you do 10 rides, we guarantee you're going to get $20. Well, of course you're going to get $20. You probably get that in two rides. 
you know, or three maybe. Uh, as soon as long as one's decent, it's retarded. That's a retarded guarantee. So, anyways, that's how things worked out. Um, now I eventually got to the. Then they even told him another email later on as it was coming down to the wire. Uh, well, apparently it was because they said, um, "Oh, by the way, if they don't, if you don't complete the 75 uh, by next week, whatever it was, I forgot what the the date now." Since you know, from when he got the, this new email, new information, he, he's only you're only going to get a five hundred dollar bonus, and if he completes it before the uh, Thursday or Friday date, whatever that was, next week, it, he'll get an extra one hundred. So then that will be the six hundred. So now they're breaking the six hundred into two pieces, five hundred for sure, and one hundred if he does it sooner. But luckily by then I only needed like eight more, and so I, and I had like four or five days. So I easily completed that, and then he got the five plus one, six, and then he actually was being nice to me and split it because he felt bad that I didn't get the six hundred bonus that we thought it, well, we both were going to get. So he um, he split it with me three and three. We both got three because I I got the five plus the extra one for doing it sooner, and that's that. So that took up some of that first month of this. I was on lift now, and I told him I can't start right away because I was anticipating doing this other thing. But instead, uh, they started my clock, and then my cousin died in the middle of the month somewhere. And so that took up a lot of time and energy, sorting through that and dealing with funeral arrangements, etc. Uh, so I really didn't start lift until much later, and I still had like over nine. Uh, 900 to do over 900. I had done maybe 25 or 30 or something, something like that low for the first month because I was doing Uber and other stuff, funeral arrangements, whatever, and then just dealing with the family and all that. Um, but then that ended on, uh, in April, beginning of April. So then I could start to kind of settle down and focus now for sure on Lyft. However, I had over 900 to do, and that's where I'm at right now. Today is the 20th or 21st, I think. It's the 21st. And I'm still working on this 1,000. I have until May 31st. So basically, I have one more month from, no, a month and 10 days from now, you could say. You know, it's coming down to the wire. However, I have done a lot. With my friend's help, we sort of started fig figuring out a schedule. And, um, worked out a system where it is possible I have to drive like crazy but it's not to the point where there's no way you're gonna make it um, but I have to do basically 17 or 18 rides every single day seven days a week for the next month and a half you know when we first figured this out but I said I don't want to work every single day and I don't want to have to push it all the way to 17 18 and he said uh, I said I'd rather do a few days higher numbers and then a few days lower, so it's, it's a, you know I get kind of a break at least, even if I have to still work seven days a week until for the next month and a half, two months. Uh, so we worked it out where I'm doing a few days of 17, and uh, other days I'm shooting for 20s. But even if I don't make the 20, as long as I make 17, that's the bare minimum to stay on schedule. I'll still make it, uh, and that's where I'm at right now. This is my morning. I'm ending my morning shift. I'm trying to head home, but I just got another ping on the way home. Hopefully it's going in the right direction. Uh, it should sort of be kind of a, a destination filter. That's something else I can explain to you later. Uh, and then here we go. So I'm going to pick this person up and they're supposedly they're going to be sort of going in my direction. And then I'll get home eventually and get a break for the mid middle of the day. Have lunch. Maybe rest, take a nap. And get back on at 3, 3.30, 4, something like that for the evening. Alright, so I guess I'll uh, talk to you later. That's where I'm at so far. <laughs> saw my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs>